So let's get started with the base language. The base language actually comprises all language constructs that are directly supported by the ASP server, more or less the primitives of the ASP server. Now these are normal rules that you've already seen in the introduction, then uh, choice rules and cardinality and weight rules. Uh, in addition, actually, there are optimization statements, but keep in mind that optimization statements are not part of the logic program. They are instructions to the solver to compute optimal models according to some weights on the, on the stable models. So we'll come to that later. Anyway, so these constructs more or less are the primitive ones, and this choice for what are the primitives has been done by the very first ASP solver, namely S models, that was developed in Ilkay Nemela's group at Alto University in Helsinki. Now, integrity constraints actually are so simple that they are mapped back onto normal rules and conditional literals are mainly treated uh, by the grounder and expanded uh, hence during grounding. Okay, now the question is, now that we have these additional language constructs, how can we actually shed light on what they really mean? Because after all, in the last part on, on modeling, I was hand-waving, I was showing you how nicely you can model with them, but what is their real meaning? That's now the next question. I'm afraid it's a truism to say that the expressiveness of a language can be enhanced by adding interesting language constructs. Why else would we have while and repeat in many programming languages? But it's the same in ASP. In the introductory section, we have seen normal logic programs. And actually, if you go back, say, well, I don't know, uh, 20, 30 years, when at the beginning of ASP, when people had nothing else than normal logic programming rules, uh, they were modeling in this. And then, of course, the question afterwards was, how can we extend the language to make it easier for modeling? So if you do that, there are basically three questions that emerge. First one is, what is the syntax of the new language concept? How do you want to formulate things? What is then the semantics of the syntactic sugar that you just defined? And finally, how can you implement the new language construct? The good thing about these basic language constructs that we are looking at um, in, in this part is that they enhance the expressiveness of the language in the sense that it's more convenient to model, but they do not enhance, let's say, the theoretical expressiveness that makes the whole language more complex. There are other language constructs that do that, but we will do this in a se separate part. Anyway, so now that we have these language constructs that we know that they are basically a, a convenience feature, syntactic sugar, we can actually translate them back into normal logic programs. And this is actually the approach that I prefer to show you now to answer all these three questions. So a way of providing actually not only semantics, but also an implementation, is to take the new language construct and provide a translation to translate it back into normal logic programs. So more or less we start with a program that has these fancy language constructs, and then we show how this is translated uh, back into normal logic programs. Now, in, this is actually, um, well, in this way we can more or less catch two birds with a stone, right? Because on the one hand, we, we see actually what, it, what these uh, language constructs mean, right? what is their semantics. On the other hand, we continue a little bit our modeling part from the beginning because instead of modeling N Queen's puzzle or a reviewer assignment, we now model what actually the language constructs mean. What is the choice rule? What is the cardinality rule? We provide encodings for that. Okay, so uh, let's get started with actually integrity constraints. 